And one toxicologist said that Atlantic salmon is the most toxic food he has ever tested, period, because it's... Also, uh, limited, limiting polyunsaturated fats, i.e. vegetable oils. Monounsaturated fats, I believe, um, and saturated fats from things like coconut oil, which, are, which is predominantly saturated fat, which you see at the very top there, are far more healthy than polyunsaturated fats. And I, I seriously think that we're going to start to hear, I don't know how long it'll take, maybe it'll be five years, 10 years, two years, I don't know. I think they're going to start to, to talk about polyunsaturated fats the way they talk about trans fats. That's just my prediction, in part because uh, polyunsaturated fats are unstable. Like canola oil, they, they put in a lot of products that they say are healthy, but uh, Canola oil is, it's chemically unstable. Um, it's vulnerable to damage from heat, light, and oxygen, so it oxidizes easily. And when you eat oxidized, oxidized fats, um, it creates inflammation in the body. And so these vegetable oils are, all tend to fall into that category, and yet they're, they're sold to us as healthy alternatives, heart healthy. Like literally, if you, if you Google canola oil, you'll, you'll get a bunch of links to the heart benefits of canola oil. And it just blows my mind because canola oil is actually rapeseed oil, which is totally unstable and then goes through a chemical process um, to tr even try to make it stable. It's, it's in my mind gonna be touted as bad as, as trans fats um, in the future. We'll see, I could be wrong. Um, next slide. The other thing to, to help with longevity is to manage uh, blood sugar. Diabetes is not a, not a joke. And I say that because my mom is diabetic and nerve damage has damaged her intestines to the point that she couldn't control going to the bathroom. She now has a colostomy bag. Um, her feet, uh, she can't feel her feet and her feet are collapsing. The bones are literally collapsing in her feet. And so she spent a lot of time in a wheelchair um, so that they didn't have to amputate her feet. And, uh, and diabetics, if you know, typically have, you know, from, from having high blood sugar, have higher rates of inflammation and greater rates of cancer. She had cancer this last year and is hopefully on the, the the backside of that, but it, it, it wasn't type, type two with her either. Um, she, all of her brothers and sisters tend to be significantly overweight in comparison to my mom, and yet she has diabetes and the rest of them don't, and I've just seen the effects of that. And so, you know, if you, you, you need to manage um, your blood sugar uh, just because it can lead to, to all sorts of things from kidney damage to, to cancer even. So eliminate, eliminating added sugar. I know this is probably super difficult for some of you. I mean, I, I don't drink any soda. I don't know if, if you guys do, maybe, maybe some of you do, but um, <clears throat> that's some of, the, some of the worst things that you can do. Uh, when you get back to just eating whole foods, you know, it's, you're gonna improve your health significantly because added sugar is in just about everything. The only reason I know that is because I, when I diet, I try to make sure that I'm not consuming sugar. And when you start looking at labels, it's like, why is there sugar in this? Like, it doesn't need to have sugar, but they put it in almost everything. Uh, next, next slide, particularly Slurpees. There's my daughter drinking a big Slurpee, but she, she sort of earned that because she trained legs with me on that day, so. I gave, her, I gave her the option for a Slurpee. The key here, though, is moderation, you know? Like, live, live your life, you know? Don't be miserable all the time, but if you can, if you can minimize or eliminate added sugar, 
uh, that would be great. Um, managing net carbs. I say net carbs because dietary fiber is something that a lot of us are, are lacking in and fiber helps uh, with a lot of things from you know all the rage about high cholesterol and so they say don't eat don't eat high cholesterol foods i think it's total bullshit and the high cholesterol foods are not a problem if you're eating enough fiber because fiber is going to take the excess carbs and you'll crap it out it's when you don't eat enough fiber and your body's just like recirculating the cholesterol and it can't can't get rid of it so Managing, managing carbs, boosting fiber, uh, miracle noodle. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I, this is my, my lifesaver when I diet because it's essentially nothing. I mean, it's a fiber, uh, glucomonin um, is a soluble fiber. You can actually buy supplements for that, but that's what these noodles are made out of. And if you've never had it before, I'm just spoiler alert warning you when you cut this open because it's in a fluid, it stinks like fish. Um, it has nothing to do with fish. I don't know why it smells like fish, but it stinks like fish. So you, if you didn't know that, you might cut it open. You'd be like, oh, this stuff's bad. It's not bad. Just dump it out, put it in a strainer, rinse it really well with water. And then whatever you cook with it, it absorbs the flavor of that. Like you, it won't taste like you're eating fish. Like you can have it with spaghetti and you, you honestly won't know that big of a difference over regular pasta, and it's essentially no carbs, but maybe a gram or so of fiber. So that's, that's one of my, my favorite things. Um, see, I had a few, th a few other things real quick on, on fiber. Nuts, vegetables, uh, Pacilla husk fiber um, is a great supplement to take. Uh, if your supplement, if your uh, fiber is too low, uh, I try to get in 50 grams of fiber a day if possible. Um, I'm not even sure what the government recommendation is. It might be 25, it, it may be 50. But uh, a lot of times I just see bodybuilders that eat chicken and rice and they're not getting the nutrition that they need. Um, so now on to, to macros. First thing I guess I'll say is that everybody's different. Um, Branch Warren, I've had discussions with him on, on nutrition and he eats so much white rice, like thousand grams type of white rice a day, like dieting, you know, like the amount of carbs that Branch Warren talks about makes my ankles swell and I didn't even eat them. Like that's how many carbs he eats. So everybody is different or else he's lying, I don't know. But um, <clears throat> what, from, what, from my experience is that you have to find out obviously what works best for you and the only way to do that is to experiment. If you're a bodybuilder uh, or you've considered competing, I always say competing is one of the best things you can do. It doesn't matter whether you win, doesn't matter really, the results don't matter at all, but just the experience of going through that process and dieting you'll learn so much about how your body functions and what, what, what aids it to, to, to function optimally. Um, it's, it's worth doing a contest if you haven't. Um, I guess in terms of what works best for me, um, if I want to get lean, I'm, I'm much more efficient at burning fat than I am of burning carbs. And most people are are very much a carb burners because we live off carbs. And if you take them away, people go nuts. And you, you can get through that and become what I would say people call fat adapted or, or where your body will preferentially burn fat for energy. And somebody who's really overweight, that's the first thing that I would want them to try to get to is stop being a carb burner, start being a fat burner. And the only way to do that is to cut carbs out outside of say vegetables, fibrous vegetables, become fat adapted. So, you know, that, that awful period is gonna be anywhere from five to 15 days. And then your body flips over to burning fat as an energy source rather than muscle glycogen. And 
And then <clears throat> as you're eating healthy fats, if, if you pull them back, your body will then not be searching for carbs as a fuel source. It'll search for fat and your body's covered in it. And so it's going to tap into that. And that's a good way of getting leaner. So, um, I'm, I'm more, I lean more towards the, the fat end of things versus a high carb diet and protein. Um, you can hit that next slide. I think we're going to just go through these. There's a lot of debate raging right now from what I've seen about protein and are we over consuming it? I remember reading in the nineties, uh, Mike Francois ate somewhere along the lines of 600 grams of protein a day, which seems insane. And I used to think two grams per pound of body weight. And then I went to a gram and a half per pound of body weight. And now I'm more inclined to say one, one gram per pound of body weight is probably sufficient provided that you're consuming enough fat and, and the right types of carbs. Um, and the reason I say that is the debate over the debate over, uh, high protein diets gets down to mTOR and I'm, I don't want to get crazy technical, but mammalian target of rapamycin is like mTOR triggers hypertrophy makes you grow if you will, like, let's just leave it at that. Um, when you consume protein, particularly certain amino acids, it can trigger mTOR. And so, uh, I emailed a gentleman who I respect and, and has way more knowledge in this stuff. And I said, what's the deal here? Like, do we want mTOR? Like, do we want to be ramping this up? via a lot of protein or, or what should, what should we do? And so I'm going to, I'm going to just read his response because this is what he said. And I thought it, I thought it was good. He said in a nutshell, nutshell, mTOR is both good and bad. mTOR allows you to put on more muscle and probably causes new mitochondria to grow. However, if elevated all the time through, yes, lots of pro protein, especially leucine among other things and keeps it elevated, Exercise itself also keeps it elevated too, but seemingly only in the muscles, brain, and heart. Having perpetually elevated mTOR could very well, as far as we know, lead to some of the problems like premature aging, cancer, diabetes, autoimmune disease, etc. What's the solution, especially for lifters? My guess is that restricting the bulk of your protein intake to the peri-workout window meaning pre and intra and possibly into post um, would be prudent move. It's my belief that even someone in your advanced state, he was speaking to me here of hypertrophy would do fine with overall less protein as long as you socked it all in during the peri-workout period. And so, as I said, from my experience, I've, I felt like one gram is, is enough and I consume a lot of my protein right around my, my training window. So I don't have an answer on how the, the whole mTOR thing is going to shake out. I know the longevity folks are bashing on high protein diets and bodybuilders have always thought we need a high protein diet. I think the answer is definitely somewhere in the middle and or timing your protein to when your body really needs it. Fat driven diet, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm more into that and, and more into, um, the right types of fats. Um, for me, it's a better, it's a better fuel source than, uh, than carbs. And the key is to focus on minimizing polyunsaturated fats. As, as I said earlier, boosting monounsaturated fats and saturated fats from things like coconut oil, um, wild caught fish, uh, particularly Alaskan salmon, because there's a lot of discussion about omega six to omega three ratios and that the American diet is out of whack on omega sixes, which leads to also in, in, in to inflammation. Um, Atlantic salmon, I avoid like the plague, uh, primarily because six, six to three is in an, like nine to one ratio. And one toxic toxicologist said that Atlantic salmon is the most toxic food he has ever tested period because it's farmed and it's, 
it's full of toxin, toxins like PCBs and other things like that. So I would avoid that type of salmon. And also, when I say fat in eating the right type of fat, um, organic, I think it, it's, there's a benefit to organics, but some people go a little overboard on the organic side of things. But when it comes to eating fat, I think it's most important that you, you look for organic sources there, particularly with meats, because toxins get stored in fat. So if you eat a non-organic ribeye, all that fat could be full of the toxins and not going to be so good for you because you're now consuming it. So when it comes to, to fats, choose the right fats. Choose, if you can, the organic stuff, uh, grass-fed beef, uh, pastured uh, eggs, and stay away from Atlantic salmon, at least from my perspective. <laughs>